All right. So let's dive into the material that I have planned for today. I'm going to be talking about discovery and how demo automation can actually transform discovery. And I'm going to give you some ideas on, on what you can do to leverage this power. So in terms of an agenda, I'm going to touch on a few of the benefits of demo automation, in particular in the context of discovery. And frankly, you've probably heard either today already or in, in other contexts, some of the some of the benefits that, I, that I'll be touching on, but I think what may be more valuable, what I, what I hope will be more valuable is some of the common mistakes that I think some people are making, particularly in the context of leveraging demo automation for discovery and what you can do about them. So with that said, benefit number one is you can provide personalized on-demand experiences to customers before you meet with them, before you see them. The idea here is to create customer-centric or industry-centric demos tailored to the prospect, the individuals, the organizations, et cetera. And they're available 24 seven for self-guided exploration. And ideally what we're, what we're shooting for here is higher engagement through relevant, flexible interactions. Now. One of the mistakes people make is they we we don't create relevant demos and we try to create demos that are too generic. We'll we'll talk a little bit more about that. So this is one of the benefits if we're approaching this in the correct manner. Number two, ideally, and this is really what we're talking about here, particularly in the context of discovery, ideally, this should lead to a streamlined lead qualification process. The demo automation platform and program should be tracking prospect behavior and identifying interest and assessing their level of interest. It also provides real-time data to determine their readiness. There are countless discussions around the number of touches it takes just to get the attention of a prospect. And the challenge is, without something like demo automation, we don't know whether the things that we're sending are actually getting viewed or seen. Demo automation gives us that real-time information. And frankly, and arguably more importantly, when we do follow up, when we do have that first meeting, we should have more accurate and more personalized conversations because we have insight in what do they what they may be interested in benefit number 3 ideally this should lead to an increase in efficiency and scalability why you should be relying on fewer live demos to introduce your solution and the benefits of your solution to potential prospects and automated demos scale. The, the, and and I, th I think it was David earlier, the, the gentleman who from, from Gartner, he mentioned that if we, the, in the traditional model, they go to the website, they click schedule a demo or, or, or get a demo. I think he showed one that said, get your free demo, which is, which is sort of comical. And then there's a number of hoops that your prospect has to jump through just to get the demo. And then what are we doing? We're taking a resource, an individual like myself, a sales engineer, and the demo itself, that just doesn't scale. With demo automation, we can scale the, the, at least the introductory demos to a large population, to a much broader reach. But we're also talking about gathering the necessary information to focus on qualified leads. And that's really what we're driving for. Benefit number four, and this is really the core of this conversation, is enhanced discovery insights. Automated demos reveal key customer preferences, what they're interested in, maybe what they're not interested in, and it informs the more personalized sales conversation, the next step demonstration. And it gives us the opportunity to better understand their 
particular needs. What are they driving at? What are they trying to accomplish? What are they not looking at? I always find it fascinating that there are so many things that we think customers might be interested in, whether we're in the, on the product team, the marketing team, the sales team, and yet we don't know until we actually get the feedback from customers. This gives us that insight. And then improve cross-team collaboration. If any of you have, have heard me speak before or, or you, you have any familiarity with, with the work that I do, one of the fundamental concepts, one of the, the, the first habit and the six habits that I wrote about is to partner with our sales counterparts. At the end of the day, sales is a team sport. We are in this together. And these demo automation platforms and these demo automation programs improve and enable cross-team collaboration. How? First of all, the data that we can capture sh is shared automatically across sales, pre-sales, marketing, product. Align we, we can align teams on what the customers actually care about. And more importantly, we can now create a more unified customer experience a more unified customer engagement. I cannot tell you how many conversations I've either been a part of or witnessed where AE and SE disagree on the approach. They disagree on what the customer or the prospect might be interested in or where they're prioritizing. I actually believe that these demo automation capabilities, these demo automation programs, they if not eliminate, they certainly reduce and minimize the, the argument or the disagreement. Why? Because data doesn't lie. It's right there in the data. And then finally, as we're talking through the benefits, and, and, and we've heard evidence and seen evidence of this in, in the last panel, they talked about this in, in David's session this morning, we saw very clear evidence of this accelerated deal cycles. Automated discovery allows us to gain those insights that we otherwise might take multiple meetings to gather, and it increases deal velocity. And by the way, in two regards or in two contexts, number one, it gives us greater insights sooner, but more importantly, it gives your prospect the opportunity to make some early decisions for themselves. Now, some of you in sales may not want to hear this, but this is the truth. Demo automation results in quicker disqualification. Now, that might sound like a bad thing. I actually think it's a good thing. Look, if you take one look and it's, and it's our best foot forward and we're clearly stating how we're different what we can help you as a potential customer do, and it doesn't res resonate, it's much better for us to not have that conversation. Let's turn our focus to those individuals and those prospects who have seen the demo and it resonates with them. That's where we wanna focus our attention. So let's move into, and I'm, 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 I'm looking at the, at the, the chat, Lindsay, do I have until two o'clock Eastern time, that, which gives me 12 minutes? I want to make sure I'm, I'm staying. If you could just put that in the chat. Let's, let's get into, yes, 2 p.m. Okay, so, so I, I, I'm, I'm going to do some of my own clock management here. Let's talk about some of the mistakes that we tend to make and the things that we can do to address those mistakes. First of all, and, and one of the benefits we talked about was personalizing the demo. Well, if we fail to personalize the demos and we take or attempt to take a one size fits all, we are simply not going to get that benefit. That's pretty clear. Do not make the mistake of trying to create generic demos that appeal to all prospects, all industries, all individuals, all roles. Again, if any of you are familiar with my work, I say this on the regular, one size does not fit all. So what's the solution? Well, obviously the reverse. 
personalization is the key build demos customized demos based on those data-driven insights create tailored demos based on the industry based on the role based on the use case and one of the things we'll talk about before before i wrap up today is then using insights that you gain from the demos that are being viewed and or not viewed out in the field to modify the approach. Mistake number two, we overcomplicate the demo. And again, if we were in a hand, if we were in a room together, I'd be inviting all of you SEs in particular to raise your hand if you've ever fallen into this trap. I know I would be the first to, to raise my hand. We are so inclined to try to pack as much information into as not only just in-person demos, but our, our demo assets. And why is this a problem? We just overwhelm people. They lose interest quickly. They fail to grasp the core value or the key value of what you're trying to promote. So what's the solution? And I think this is a biggie, folks. Make demos, particularly your demo assets, narrow in scope. I would encourage you, the more focused the demo is and focused on not just the essential features, the differentiating features, but the benefits of those features, specifically in the context of the role that you're targeting or the industry that you're targeting. Each demo should have a very clear objective, target audience, and message, and be succinct and concise as possible. Next mistake. And this is really a big one, particularly in the context of discovery, is that we ignore the data and the analysis that can be done. We fail to track what what demos are being viewed to what context by whom and analyze that information and then act upon the information now you may you may find well you're tracking the information you're analyzing but then you're not actually doing anything with it at the end of the day you're missing valuable insights you know there's a there's a term that i've coined called discovery in disguise and and I and I use this term in the context of the live demo. I have people come to me all the time, SEs that I work with all the time, say, "Well, Chris, I count, in in most cases, I'm asked to come in and do a demo, and and I haven't had a chance to do any discovery of my own, and I don't know what's going on, or or I or I don't know 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 what they're expecting, what they're trying to achieve, and 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 how to tailor the demo." My message is, well, in that case, if you've been asked to do a demo go in but the purpose of the demo is not to 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 convince or sell the purpose of the demo is actually to draw them out to 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 get them talking i believe the purpose of autom many of your automated demos shouldn't be to sell to convince to pitch it should be to draw them out in some way find out what are they interested in? What are they trying to achieve? What resonates with them? Build your demo assets with the data collection perspective in mind. So, of course, what's the solution? I just lost my light again, but in the interest of time, I'm, I'm going to keep going. Obviously, we want to we want to track and analyze whatever data we can. What features are they interested in? Their intent? How invested are they? Who is being invited to view. And more importantly, where they dropped, what are they not looking at? And then use the data to your advantage. Maybe that's refining demo content, changing the approach, changing the message, or just personalizing the follow-up. The, the very next meeting, whether it's a demonstration, a, a, a further conversation should be based on and shaped by the insights that we're gaining from the, the demo asset that they have spent time reviewing. Next mistake. And, and, I, and I, I, think, I think I heard 
in the, in the panel, and it wasn't exactly this, but I think I, I heard, make sure you integrate your demo program with your sales process. Well, I'm going to take it even a step further. Make sure you integrate it with the CRM. If not, sales is missing those insights and, and opportunities are just going to fall. And, and as we all know, time kills all deals. And the whole purpose of demo automation is to accelerate the sales cycle. So the, the obvious solution there, integrate with your C CRM. And as, the, as, as was stated on the, the panel, make sure you've integrated the, the, the demo assets, the data that you're, you're collecting with the sales process. It should be a fundamental part of your tech stack and your process. Next mistake, ignoring different buyer personas. Again, there is no one single demo, single persona. Sometimes we're too technical it's, or, or it's too high level and it's not relevant to the individual that we're targeting. So of course, what's the goal? What's, what's the solution? Create multiple demos create multiple demo paths and tailor it to the different personas. And I'm going to allow me to suggest that we need to be strategic here. I, and, 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 and I think the, the, the panelists talked about this a, a, a great deal. This is not something that you, you sort of do ad hoc. This has to be a strategic plan. And I, and I think that one of, one of the panelists said, you almost have to think of it as a product. Think like a product manager. Think you through your user stories. I think this is maybe my second to last mistake. Neglecting to update and improve. At the end of the day, when you take on a demo program, you're in it for the long haul. And you really need to have a long-term perspective. Don't fail to update. And, and it's not just based on feedback, although feedback is important. Changes in the market, changes in the product. I'll submit that having outdated demos, and, and, and in fact, demos that don't accurately represent your the current state of your product are arguably or is arguably worse than not having any automated demos at all. So what's the solution? Think of demo automation as evolutionary. It's dynamic, it evolves over time. You update your demos as, as the product evolves, as the trend, as, as the industry trends evolve, et cetera. And then finally, and folks, this, it's interesting to me, I've heard, from a number of clients that I work with who have implemented demo automation for themselves, one of the biggest challenges that they face is quote, and, the, and, and literally these are, these, are, these are quotes that I've heard, we can't get our sales folks to actually leverage the demo assets that we've created. And instead of sending them ahead, they're pulling my SEs into, engagements when they could do or they could leverage the demo automation this is the biggest challenge look change is difficult and sellers default to habits and here's a big thing if they don't understand they will likely not comply so of course what's the solution you actually need to plan and, and have a change management plan. This is not just about leveraging technology. Train your sales reps to leverage insights. Provide training on the sales automation platform, how to interpret the data, how to integrate those insights. Confidence is key. And at the end of the day, folks, it's all about having the right partner. And of course, I, I'll, 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 I'll give a shout out to Reprise for being the, the host of, of this event. Leverage an organization like Reprise to make this a success. Folks, in closing, 
demo automation really is discovery automation. The benefits are real, but there is no easy button. You have to be in it for the long haul. And I would encourage you to choose your partner wisely. And with that, I am staring at a clock that says two o'clock. So I think we have landed this plane on time. I will turn it back to you, Laura.